Welcome to the Emerging Temple broadcast for October 30th, 2019. I am Michael Obeya. I will be your guide for the rest of this broadcast. At Emerging Temple, we seek to analyze current events within the context of God's plan for mankind, a plan in which he intends to establish a government here on earth in which some of us will rule with him. Before I continue, I'd like to encourage you to like our page, to share with your friends, and if you have a bell icon at the bottom of your screen, I'd like you to hit that bell icon so you can receive notification anytime we upload new videos. Also, we would encourage you to subscribe to our channel. And also, if you would like to support us, please um, go to patreon.com and seek our handle, look for our handle, Emerging Temple, where you can also support us with as little as a dollar a month or anything that you please. Um, if you are on Facebook, you can find our handle in Facebook, Emerging Temple, where we also upload these videos and we also engage in discussions with people from around the world that have an interest in what we are talking about. Okay. Um, first of all, before I go continue, I want to apologize for missing yesterday. We've had technical difficulties. Uh, we had a technical difficulty on Friday, um, but it was resolved on Monday and it came back again Tuesday. And I believe that we're good to go now. So we shouldn't have any more hiccups, um, you know, God willing, uh, for the next few weeks or months. Um, we began on uh, Monday this week, uh, the 28th, and we began to discuss um, the role of women in modernity, the um, condition of, um, I guess, spinsterhood um, that is has taken over the world as an epidemic. And we decided today to look at men and see where it is we can help men the way we sought to help women a couple of days ago. And um, I thought that um, some kind of guidance for men to understand who women are as a gift to us, um, who they are, how they are, what the, the difference in composition, what the difference, what the scriptures tell us about the difference in makeup of men and women, and why it is so, so important to prioritize demonstrating love to our women, to our wives, to our fiancés, to that significant, that significant woman who you want to spend the rest of your life with. Before I go any further, I want to stress that if there's anything you hear in this message tonight that you forget, let it not be this. Men love your women. And when I say love, I'm not just talking about a feeling. I'm talking about an act, a continuous perpetual action, because this is what we have been called to. Now, mistakes might have been made in the past because we really didn't understand, we really didn't know the value of these people to us. But let me tell you something, the most valuable thing God ever gave us was a woman. And we need to understand the treasure that they are. And I'm not, you know, I'm not one to, you know, everybody seems to want to kind of um, please women by saying nice things about them. Well, good thing about what I'm doing is because I can actually see it by revelation. What, how special they are. That's why I want to get this message across to men. You know, I wish I'd known what I know today 10 years ago. Honestly, women are very special. They're the best gift you can have, and you need to understand how to handle them. You need to understand certain limitations that God has imposed on them, and it's not their fault. These are limitations from God for a reason. Okay? Um, well, why don't we look at the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and use it as a kind of base to begin our discourse tonight, okay? So let's look at the Ephesians chapter five, and I think we'll take it from verse 25. Ephesians chapter five, from verse 25, okay? So, chapter five, verse 25, we'll take the verse 33. It says, husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. 
that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular, men, so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So brethren, men are called to love their wives, but women are called to reverence their husband. I'll say that again. Men are called to love their wives, but women are called to reverence their husbands. You can study the scriptures over and over and over again. You'll be hard pressed to find anywhere where God tells women to love their husbands. There is one place, just one place, that I can see in the whole New Testament where women are told to love their husbands, and it's placed within a sentence of a thousand other things women are supposed to do. Not a priority, it seems. What seems to be on the mind of God concerning women towards men is that women obey men, is that women reverence men. But just as critical, probably more, is that men love their wives, okay? So loving your wife, loving your fiance, loving the girl you want to marry is not optional, okay? And we're gonna see from scripture tonight the value of the word of God and how the word of God will help us and guide us into that path, okay? So we understand, once we can understand what women are, why they do some of the things they do based on how God has created them, we'll be okay, all right? So let's look at um, the book of 1 John and chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. It says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 John chapter 4, verse, verse 10. It said, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. Stop. Christ is supposed to be the exemplar for men towards their, in their relationship towards their women. We just saw that in Ephesians 5. Here we see that it is not that we love God, but because God first loved us, that we now love God. So, men, we need to understand that if a woman comes into our life, she might not demonstrate at the get-go the kind of love that we seem to want to share and show her. And over time, we might begin to feel that there's a lack of reciprocal reciprocity. Okay? But, if we are obeying God, which is demonstrating love towards her, the inevitable consequence of that is that she herself will respond with even greater love. Now, what do I mean by that? One thing about the woman you have to understand is she is like a computer. Whatever you put into her is what you get back tenfold. When you put a seed into her, she gives you a baby in nine months, a beautiful baby girl, a beautiful baby boy. If you demonstrate your love and care and concern for her consistently, she will overwhelm you with love and care consistently. Now, there are exceptions. There are people who do to certain things in the past and all of that. They cannot handle love. They're always suspicious. There's always got to be some cat somewhere, or simply put, this is not the person for you, okay? But for the majority of women who have chosen to be a part of your life, 
you must understand that it is not optional for you to go out the way of your way to demonstrate love. Now, remember, we come from different cultures. In some cultures, it's about opening the door and buying flowers and chocolates and all that. Look, if that's not you, the next most important thing you need to understand is you need to sit her, your woman down and talk with her and explain to her how much she means to you and that she shouldn't worry about her friends that she sees the husbands or fiancés doing this and doing that for them, but that she should understand that when you do the things you do, that they are an exp expression of how you feel. Now, don't believe that, oh, because you've told her once, that's enough. Women want to hear it and see it consistently. It's not something that's going to end when she's 60 years old and she's going to say, you know what, we've been together now, you know, 35 years. And, you know, I'm really, you don't have to tell me anymore how much you love me. You don't have to show me anymore how you, it's never going to end. And you need to understand that. Now, remember what we read in Ephesians 5 just now. Why don't we take a look at that again real briefly? Okay, Ephesians 5. Let's take a look at that again real briefly. Okay, so you can understand what I'm trying to talk about here. Okay, in Ephesians 5, we took it from verse 25. But let's look at verse 27. He says, um, sorry, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Okay? Okay, verse 26. Okay, he says, Christ gave himself for the church, that's his bride, so that he might sanctify her, cleanse her by the washing of water by the word. That means if Christ's wife didn't come ready-made, who are you to expect your woman to come ready-made? You have work to do. And the tools and the substance by which you, quote, wash her is love. Okay? Always remember that. It is love. Where are we getting this from? We're getting this from the scriptures. We're not getting this from my mind. We're getting this from the scriptures. And if you go and share this video with any, any woman, I don't care what her religion is. She will tell you that this man is onto something. Okay, now, by the way, don't look at me like I'm some prophet. I didn't know this 10 years ago. I didn't know this 20 years ago. I mean, I read it, but I didn't understand the revelation of it. I didn't understand the true meaning of this thing. I didn't understand that the women in my life were a gift from God and they were power to take me and them to the level that God had for us that they were indeed a health meet fit, which is what God said about Eve, okay? Now, as I often do, I love to play a clip, a video clip of something that might be able to, you know, help us, you know, picture exactly what I'm talking about. So why don't we take a quick look at this video clip? It's not long, it's only about uh, three minutes, okay? So let's listen to this guy. Do you love your wife? Yes. Prove it. Like, what's the metric? Give me the number that helps me know, right? Because when you met her, you didn't love her, right? Now you love her, right? Tell me the day the love happened. It's an impossible question, right? But it's not that it doesn't exist. It's that it's much easier to prove over time. She didn't fall in love with you because you remembered her birthday and bought her flowers on Valentine's Day. She fell in love with you because when you woke up in the morning, you said good morning to her before you checked your phone. She fell in love with you because when you went to the fridge to get yourself a drink, you got her one without even asking. She fell in love with you because when you had an amazing day at work and she came home and she had a terrible day at work, you didn't say, yeah, 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 but let me tell you about my day. You sat and listened to her awful day and you didn't say a thing about your amazing day. This is why she fell in love with you. I can't tell you exactly what day, and it was no particular thing you did. It was the accumulation of all of those little things that she woke up one day and it's as if she pressed a button. She goes, I love him. It's about transitions. So if you were to, if you were to go to the gym, right? It's like exercise, right? If you go to the gym and you work out and you come back and you look in the mirror, you will see nothing. And if you go to the gym the next day and you come back and you look in the mirror, you will see nothing. So clearly there's no results, can't be measured, it must not be effective. So we quit, right? 
Or if you fundamentally believe that this is the right course of action and you stick with it, like in a relationship, I bought her flowers and I wished her happy birthday and she doesn't love me. Clearly I'll give up. You know, that's not what happens. If you, if you believe there's something there, you commit yourself to act, an act of service. You commit yourself to the regime, the exercise. You can screw it up. You can eat chocolate cake one day. You can skip a, skip a day or two. You know, you, you, it allows for that. But if you stick with it consistently, I'm not exactly sure what day, but I know you'll start getting into shape. I know it. And the same with the relationship. It's not about the events. It's not about intensity. It's about consistency. Right? You go to the dentist twice a year, your teeth will fall out. You have to brush your teeth every day for two minutes. What does brushing your teeth twice a day for two minutes do? Nothing. Unless you do it every day, twice a day, for two minutes. Right? It's the consistency. Going to the gym for nine hours does not get you into shape. Working out every day for 20 minutes gets you into shape. Those things are like going to the dentist. They're very important. They're good for reminding us or getting us back on track, learning new lessons. But it's the daily practice of all the monotonous, little, boring things like brushing your teeth that matter the most. It's the consistency that matters, brothers. It's the consistency that matters. You know, the scriptures tell us that Christ has liberated us from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is simply the Old Testament law, okay? Just take it from me, all right? If you didn't know. He said, and he has brought us into the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? What's the difference? Well, simply put, in the old law, there was a demand put on you, but no ability given. But in the new law, there is a demand put on you because the ability has been given, the energy, the strength, the power is there, the drive is there. You have it in yourself to love. Ask yourself, why did God never use a mother's love to describe his love? He always used the father's love. Because you men, you're the one who love. Your wives, your fiance, she's the one who ought to obey. You have what it takes to love. Don't go looking for love from them. If you want love from them, give them a little love. They'll give you a lot of love. But make sure it is consistent. I'm making this video today knowing very well what I spoke about a couple of days ago and feeling strongly that to help that teaching to women who need to at a younger age, get married. Like I said, I need to know, they need to know that there are men out there who are ready, who understand what it is to take care of them, what, what they're here for. Remember, the women were brought here by God primarily to help us. So there's something in them that does want to help us. But the world and modernity have driven all of us crazy. Okay? Women are now trying to be like men. And men, are there some men who are like women? It ought not to be that way, okay? The scripture said not, <laughs> no effeminate will enter into the kingdom. Okay, but that's a topic for another day, all right? So I want to encourage us, okay, as we, as we, as we go through whatever it is, I don't care your age, maybe you're 25, maybe you're 45, maybe you're 85, 75, and your relationship with your wife, with your fiance has cooled because you don't like this about her, you don't like this about her. Remember something, the Bible says we shouldn't be bitter with them. We should be patient with them because they are the what? Weaker vessel. Don't let yourself be grieved too deeply against them. But even worse, don't let them become so bitter that they grieve about us. Let me show you a scripture to buttress what I'm talking about. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, okay? Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, okay. All right, I don't have it up here, but I'll just tell you what it says, okay? 1 Peter chapter 3, okay, he's taken from me. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. I don't have it in front of me, but trust me, I think I know that scripture. It says, um, husband, do not make your wives, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, 
husbands, love your wives, do not embitter them, do not make them to be bitter so your prayers be not hindered. I'll repeat, do not allow your wives to be embittered so your prayers are not hindered. So many of us men are going about trying to get our business off the ground, trying to go further in our career, trying to do so many great things for the Lord, but yet we seem to be coming against a barrier after barrier, limitation after limitation. And meanwhile, we're there trying to bind some devil, trying to you know, go get, get angry with somebody who we think is getting in our way, when in actual fact, we have a wife at home, we have a, we have a fiance, we have somebody who's back there, who's in tears crying to God because of the way we about treat them. Okay? Brothers, this ought not to be. Okay? Now, I'll grant you there are women who are easily embittered. And look, if you're not already married to a woman like that, look, don't, you know, get yourself out of that situation. The worst thing a man can do to himself is get himself entangled with a woman that easily is embittered and easily keeps hurt and pain because that is going to pull you down, right? If you're already married to a person like that, well, now you understand what you're dealing with. You've got to find some way to manage that relationship. You've got to find some way to minimize the things that provoke that kind of wrath in her. And like Jesus just showed us the example, find some way to wash her out of that kind of thing for your own good, for your own safety, for your own health, okay? So, you know, I, I know that this teaching to a lot of men might seem a bit too, um, too one-sided. It's not about one-sided. I'm not trying to be one-sided. I'm just trying to show you what God has shown me from his word. And I'm telling you that these things that we're talking about have bigger value than just your relationship with your wife. It affects the whole body of Christ. It affects the whole church. That we understand how to conduct ourselves within the household of God according to what the scriptures have told us. Let's take a look at um, 1 Timothy. Um, let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. All right. 1 Timothy chapter 2, talking about Adam and Eve. It says, uh, verse 14. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. It says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk about verse 15 tonight. There's a lot to be said about that. I'm just going to stick with verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. Friends. I want you to think on that scripture for a second. Regardless of what you thought before tonight, before today, the scripture says Adam was not deceived. That means Adam knew that God said, don't eat of this tree. If you do, on the day you do, you'll be cut off from me and in dying you will surely die. The Bible just told you that Adam was not deceived. When you're not deceived and you do something, it means you intentionally did that thing. The Bible just said that Eve, the woman, was the one that was deceived. So if the woman was deceived, the man was not. The man knew very well that if I do this thing, I'm going to be in a lot of hell. Why did he do it? Brothers, think. Sisters, think. Why did Adam do it? The Bible says he was not deceived. What was the first thing Adam said when he saw Eve? He said, wow. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Did Eve say the same thing? No. The man always loves first. Adam loved Eve so much that when he saw that Eve had eaten of the fruit and expected her to die, he said to himself, I will die with her. 
The truth is, he shouldn't have done that. But the love that he had for her, because of the law of love that was in him from God, he couldn't help himself. And so, no matter what kind of love you have for your wife, it will never and should never grow to the point where it outpaces the love you have for God and for Jesus Christ. But I want you to understand that that story is written to us. The Bible begins with a love story, the love of a man for his wife, to the point that he was willing to die for her. And that's why the Apostle Paul said it's the story of Christ and the church. Friends, remember one thing. The life you and I live today, we are living the life of the Christ. It's a life of what? Betrayal. It's a life of forgiveness and unforgiveness. But most importantly, it's a life of trust and faith towards God in his ability to resurrect and to raise those things we thought were dead, to give us a new beginning, to be built upon a sure foundation, the foundation that is his word. That is what we have begun to do tonight. I want every single one of you who is watching me right now and understanding what I'm talking about to take this message and share with the men and women that you know. I don't care what their religion is. Okay? The word of God is to all mankind and what you're hearing is what god is speaking to us at this moment at this time i don't think it's coincidental that i've had technical problems since this message came to me a couple of days ago okay i don't think so okay i believe that there's so much more that god has for us and i want to encourage you out there okay to obey the word of god okay i want you men out there to begin to surprise your wives okay look i'm telling you if even if you don't have any money on a friday evening just take her out someplace i don't care if all you can buy is a uh, i don't care a stick of uh meat something just just do it just just take the time out to do that okay it, it, it's important do it consistently all right do it consistently okay women one important thing you have to understand there's something in you that always wants more that was what happened to your mother eve she wasn't even yet a sinner but her eyes kept looking for something more beautiful you must control that don't make these men into workhorses where they're going to die early because they want to please you okay be willing and able consistently to let them know how much they mean to you and how grateful you are, okay? When they go to work and take a lot of nonsense just to bring food to put on the table, you're not there, okay? And when they come back, there's one place they need to have peace, and that's where you are, where you're telling them how much they mean to you, how they're your, how they're your king and how they're your prince and how they matter to you. And when that guy goes out, he goes out with the strength of a workhorse, okay? And when he's out there, he can take anything from anybody because he knows he's coming back home to a place where there's love and kindness and care for him. The same love he got when he lived with his mother and his father. That's why the scriptures tell you that for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. Look, you think you left your father and mother? No, you didn't. He left his father and mother, and now you are his wife. But well, what does that mean? You are now his mother. You are now his father. Okay? He lives to impress you. He lives to make your life beautiful. His purpose in life is to make your life beautiful. If he's not doing that, something in him is not satisfied. Show gratitude. Show gratitude. Stop looking at what other people are doing. They have their own race. God gives them all kinds of money because of the work he's called them to do. You don't have that money because that's not your calling. But you guys are cool as you are. Because you have Jesus Christ, you have one another. Take what I say seriously. Go through the scriptures that I've shared with you. 
I know many of you are going through a lot of hard times. I know many of you are divorced. Many of you are separated. Whatever the past is, the past is. Whatever God brings your way now, as you go forward into the new day, go in that new day with this new understanding. Okay? Life always has two parts. The first part might be 70 years. The first part might be just 10 years. But this is the second chance. Okay? Take it. God bless you. Please share these videos with your friends and family, like I always often ask you to do. Subscribe to our channel. Like our page. And if you have questions about some of the things we share, in the comment section, put your questions. State your opinions. If there's something you disagree with, feel free. Okay? We're all children of God. We're all learning from God. You might have something that has a blessing for someone else. Okay? So, friends, uh, my time is up for today. I look forward to speaking with you again tomorrow. Um, please make sure you visit our website, templeoftruth.us, where you can read a little bit more about us. And you're able to donate if you want to. And also go to patreon.com and look for our handle, the Emerging Temple. Okay, friends? Thank you so much for your time. I hope this has been a blessing. I want to encourage the men out there. Remember, love your woman consistently. God bless you.